Hi everyone, welcome to this new video with the Photoroom engineering team. I'm Vincent, I'm an iOS engineer here at Photoroom. And I'm Mathieu, a machine learning engineer here at Photoroom. And I work mostly on optimizing and deploying machine learning models to production. If you don't know about Photoroom, it's a mobile application to create professional looking images for e-commerce and entrepreneurs. And you can download it for free with the link in the description. And so today with Mathieu, we're going to be talking about how to benchmark machine learning models when they are run on iOS. So first, let's start with a quick recap about how machine learning models are executed on iOS. The nice thing is that on iOS, we have the core ML framework that makes it quite easy to run a machine learning model on a device. And another big help is the fact that since the iPhone XS, so already a few years back, all iPhone models now ship with a dedicated piece of hardware that is called the neural engine, whose job is to provide hardware acceleration when we are running a machine learning model. And that hardware acceleration is really important because it can really make the difference between something that looks laggy and not nice to use and something that looks smooth and very magical to the user. Now the tricky part is that up until iOS 16, there was no way of knowing if a machine learning model was compatible with this neural engine. And so the only way to test it was to benchmark it ourselves using a Medshift app that we made that would compare the running time using the, only the neural engine or the GPU or the CPU. This step is crucial for us because we want to make sure that our model runs as fast as possible to provide the smoothest experience for our users in the app. And it's a very important point because if a model doesn't run on the neural engine is really going to show in the performances. It can really make the difference between a user experience that looks smooth and magical and one that looks very laggy and not professional at all. And so that's why it's very important for us at Photoroom to thoroughly benchmark our models to make sure that they indeed leverage as much of the neural engine as possible. And so Mathieu, I think you're first going to show us how we use to benchmark our models before iOS 16 and Xcode 14, right? So before iOS 16, we had to make our own benchmarking app that would load a model and benchmark it on different compute units. The first one being just the CPU, the second one being the CPU and the GPU, and finally the last one being CPU, GPU, and a &E. Now, if the model does leverage the ANE when offered the possibility to do so, it would run much faster in that configuration than in the two others. So the benchmarking app that we have is a simple app like this. We just load the model and run benchmark and then wait for a bit. And you would see the processing time in milliseconds appear for each configuration. Just now we saw it took 400 milliseconds for the CPU, then took 200 milliseconds for the GPU, and then finally 100 milliseconds for the neural engine. As you can see, it's twice faster than the GPU and four times faster than the CPU. And if you have an interactive model with which a user has to interact, then it will make the user experience much smoother to leverage the ANE. And so if I understand it correctly, when I look at the result of the benchmark, since when offered the possibility to use the ANE, the model ran much faster, we can conclude that at least for some of its layer, the model indeed used the possibilities of running on the hardware accelerated component. You're exactly right. Now the caveat with this benchmarking app is that we only know if globally the model is leveraging the neural engine or not. The model is composed of many building blocks and we'd like to know for each building block if all of them are compatible or not with the neural engine. Unfortunately, this app and up until iOS 16, it was not possible to know it beforehand. But as you said, Mathieu, things change recently because with the latest version of iOS and Xcode, we now have access to a new tool that will actually give us all the information we need to know on which compute units each layer of our models are actually running. Exactly. Now with Xcode 14 and iOS 16, you can actually run the benchmark from your computer by going to the performance part of your core ML model, clicking on performance report, choosing the device you want to run, and then run next. You can choose the target unit that you want. So at first, we'll use all and run the test. You no longer need to build the app for your model, and you no longer need to build the app for each devices. You can just go on your Xcode uh, window and select the iPhone you want, which is much faster and a much smoother developer experience overall. So now we can see the result of the benchmark, and we know for which compute unit it is compatible. As we can see, most of the layers are totally compatible with the neural engine, so that's good. And we also have an overall latency benchmark on the model. So here it took 30 milliseconds to load the model, and the prediction takes on average 30 milliseconds as well. So now we, comp 
we made the benchmark for all the compute units, but maybe we just want to benchmark it on the GPU, for instance. So we can go again, click choose a device, and choose CPU and GPU. So this will show you the order of magnitude of acceleration that the neural engine brings to the machine learning model. I really want to highlight the fact that knowing which building block of our machine learning model is compatible with the neural engine is a vital information. This is great information for the machine learning engineers that can then optimize your model, choose different architectures to make sure that the user have a management that is as smooth as possible. Yeah, I agree. It's very valuable information for you to know which layer needs work to be optimized. And from what I see, it's also great for iOS engineers because actually the report is quite easy to generate in Xcode. And so there is basically nothing preventing an US engineer when given a new model to integrate to make sure that indeed the model will be able to take as much as possible advantage of the neural engine and you don't need any uh, machine learning skill to do so. Plus, for an iOS developer, you can do the benchmark on as many various types of iPhone as you want. So here we have an iPhone 13 Pro, which is currently the best uh, in terms of latency, but you might want to be able to train it or uh, to test it on an iPhone XS or an iPhone 11 Pro, for instance. And this is all being made easy for you thanks to Edge.14. All right, so thank you, Mathieu, for this very nice explanation. Thank you for having me, Vincent. It's very cool to see that this year we have some new tools that makes it easier than ever to integrate machine learning models inside iOS apps. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see the next one. Thank you for watching and see you next time.